Hi, uh, I'm Chris Davey, and I'm here with uh, Nuon Dias to discuss the um, Gateway API and the future of cloud native applications, which is an article uh, Nuon recently produced. Uh, hi, Nuon. Hey, Chris. Nice to meet you. So I've got some, hopefully, some uh, probing, probing and insightful questions for you. Um, so we'll, uh, without further ado, we'll jump straight in. So throughout the article, you talk about the new um, Gateway API standard <clears throat> in Kubernetes um, and sort of the adoption. Um, right. One of the things I wanted to kick off with is what's really needed to make this standard more widely adopted because i think there's only a sort of a handful of projects currently that are adopting this standard so in your view what's going to really drive this forward yeah so um yeah I, as you said so um this the, the gateway api standard has um, has less adoption compared to the in ingress spec uh, the gateway api spec has less adoption compared to the ingress spec uh, and um so it's relatively new. So that's one reason we see uh, <clears throat> we don't see a lot of adoption as of yet, like version 1.0 was released uh, very recently, like uh, literally a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I think uh, this needs a lot of education and evangelizing, right? So people are uh, mostly used to the English specification. So the reason for the, the birth of this specification is to make the English spec much more flexible, uh, much more uh, powerful, um, and you know, much more extensible. So that's the reason this was born, but the market is currently used to the ingress specification a lot. So there needs to be a lot, lot of evangelization, a uh, lot of education uh, on the gateway API spec. So I think that will uh, drive adoption. <clears throat> and at the same time, so there, if you look at the state of the market right now, there's a lot of uh, adoption promise uh, in the market. Uh, but not fully committed production yet. Uh, I mean, not as much fully committed, uh, you know, production implementations yet. So I think uh, vendors have a responsibility in their hands to uh, to adopt and uh, to adopt this and make it production ready, uh, gen you know, with general availability. Also, I think you know, the, the given given the the nature of the specification, given its its power, it is also a bit complex compared to the uh, ingress uh, specification so so there needs to be a lot of uh, you know educational content as well uh, you know uh, basically address adoption barriers like like reducing the learning curve you know uh, making things simple and so on like, uh, like come up with ha have better tooling support for it so i think these are some of the things that are needed uh, to to you know get the adoption of up of this uh, the gateway api spec Cool. So the gateway API spec is focused purely on sort of Kubernetes uh, environments. Um, right. Do you think there's any sort of need for this outside of the Kubernetes environments? Because obviously we've got like the actual API specifications, Open API, Swagger, etc. But um, actually defining the gateway themselves outside of a Kubernetes environment, do you think there's any need in in that space? Um. We're, we're probably not. Uh, so, so the purpose of this uh, specification is to, you know, uh, take uh, something like like an API specification, like you said, like like an open API or something like that, some kind of you know proxy uh, or specification, and, and and the purpose of this spec is to make it Kubernetes native. So uh, I, I don't really see a need <coughs> where uh, you know this has to be. Uh, this has to go outside of the Kubernetes ecosystem. I think it's it's purpose built for the Kubernetes ecosystem. Cool. So obviously within that, there's a number of vendors that have offerings uh, for sort of API management, API gateways within Kubernetes. Uh, what do you think this spec's going to do in in their uh, space for their adoption of it? Because isn't it sort of like hurting their sort of uh, USP? Because it's standardizing, it means they're all offering the same thing. Or do you think there's uh, more in it for them if they adopt this? Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, that's um, yeah, that's an interesting question. So, yes. Yeah, so, at, at first glance, uh, it seems you know counterproductive for for an API gateway vendor to adopt to this standard because it brings up the question of 
you know how do i how am i unique now so i i i work based on the same specification as everyone else does i have the same set of functionality that everyone else does right uh, <clears throat> but 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 to be honest there's a lot of um, you know positive or advantage by uh, vendors adopting this uh, specification because as you know api gateways are no longer a new thing they are mostly a commodity so one one big benefit uh, api gateway vendors can get from this is that you know uh, they can focus on their differentiation now all the basic features the basic functionality they are all now embedded in the specification so the moment you say you comply to this specification that immediately ticks off a set of functionality right the, the most vendors have this functionality anyway right so immediately it ticks off those functionality and you don't have to spend you know brain cycles on implementing this functionality anymore it's it's there it's defined you just have to comply to it and that gives you more freedom to focus on your specialization like some gate vendors may specialize on like graphql some some on rest some on web sockets right so it gives you a lot of flexibility to focus on your specialization and also it it opens up it immediately opens up a bigger a larger market for you right so the so because you know whether you like it or not this is now a standard it's adopted by the community and and the market is going to be looking for it so you are going to have a disadvantage by not adopting to the spec and when you say you are you are compliant with the spec that basically opens up a bigger market for you right so you now become a contender uh, to to grab the market opportunity so that gives you a big uh, advantage as well right and, and also most of these things like i said are like commodity functionality so really by through collaboration through through community you can not just benefit but you, you can also collaborate to to the community as well right so you no longer have to spend time yourself figuring out the best practices and best ways of implementing certain features they are given to you by the community right and at the same time it also gives you an opportunity to contribute back with your specialization with your expertise and you know uh, uh, create a much competitive and much uh, more powerful ecosystem in this space so so i think it gives you uh, at first glance even though it may seem counterproductive i honestly think it gives them more freedom to focus on what really differentiates them and build on that so you mentioned a few things to differentiate around certain protocols, specializations, GraphQL. Um, what other elements around this do you think are good areas to focus on where the vendors can sort of do that sort of added uh, added value uh, beyond that standard specification, beyond the commodity? Yeah, so so there are actually uh, a, a lot. It's, it's, a, it's a very diverse uh, space. There, there's a lot of space for innovation. Now, uh, and there are different, uh, you know, areas you can focus on, like security, for example. So one area is you can you can focus on uh, specialized uh, security protocols, such as you know OAuth two and stuff are now standard, but uh, <clears throat> um, maybe special ones like mutual uh, transport, I mean, mutual uh, trust, uh, data encryption, you know, uh, special security protocols for uh, addressing different kinds of uh, you know security threats. So you can there's a space on that and there could be other areas like you know caching for example you that's an that's maybe another area you can focus on how do you become the best api cache provider in the market right and so those are like rate limiting it's another area where you can innovate because rate limiting different flavors of rate limiting are required to address different kinds of use cases in the market and so th these are some examples of the api gateway space itself but uh, you, you can even think broader right there are the, the 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 api management is not just the aspect of api gateways there's there's a whole management play that needs to be done as well so this the, you, you can also focus on things like developer portals things like management portals things like offering best of breed observability and insights and analytics onto your APIs. So, so these are, uh, you know, these are areas that vendors can really focus on 
and try to differentiate themselves against the, the rest of the market. So still, still plenty to do then. <laughs> still plenty to do. Yes. Cool. Um, but what you know that that sort of you might have answered it a little bit in in the last uh, session. But um, why um, is it important for organisations to have the ability to adopt different gateway vendors? You know, um, because obviously, you know, this makes it easier for them to sort of deploy and run. Uh, gateways and they can use multiple vendors but why would they want to yeah so i think it it again leads to the the your your requirement and and uh, your requirements and the use cases you are trying to address as an organization so, so uh, different organizations the the their the culture of apis and their business needs are different for example there could be one organization who is you know who is primarily married to like let's say graphql they do everything based on graphql and therefore they want very advanced features in the space of graphql so you might want to so that kind of an organization might want to look for a, a gateway vendor that is specializing on you know different uh, use cases related to graphql right so there could be like websocket uh, related requirements so you could be looking for vendors specializing in that area right so so the, 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 so that's one kind of benefit and especially when it comes to you know large organizations uh, you know uh, fortune 100 large organizations something we have noticed uh, being in the industry is uh, some of these organizations they have different api gateway vendors in different departments and and now they are looking to consolidate um, everything together Right. So these different departments have, you know, uh, picked their vendors uh, again based on different features and so on. Now, now this this the standardization allows these organizations to better consolidate, uh, better consolidate and have a sing, sing, single management and governance plane, uh, a security enforcement uh, layer while utilizing the best of breed features of the different gateway gateway vendors, which was impossible to do in the past right so so uh, the, the, that kind of specialization and also in some cases um, organize certain organizations who are running like you know mission critical systems they may anyway want to have like two vendors uh, uh, powering the same api you know in case one goes down you still you can power your api with the other so um, so there are you know uh, and it prevents vendor lock in as well so, uh, you know, you are not bound any longer to a single vendor. So in case you want to switch, that helps too. So, so organizations, I think, still have a big uh, motivation for uh, looking for, you know, different gateway vendors based on their use case, nature of their business uh, and their different kinds of business needs. Okay. So... <clears throat> we've talked a lot about the benefits of this for sort of like organizations and, and, and vendors, but ultimately uh, how does this benefit the people that have got to build this stuff? You know, so how does this um, offer any benefit to like developers? Does it change their workflow? How does it help them? Right. Yeah. So that's another uh, huge, um, you know, area of benefit this offers. Like, so uh, now, now previously when developers or, when you say developers, I guess it involves like DevOps like people as well who are running these gateway systems. Now, uh, previously, these developers, they had to configure, you know, uh, uh, resources, Kubernetes resources such as uh, ingress controllers or, or load balancers or proxy servers. So they were effectively configuring different kinds of resources. But now with this specification, they get a you know declarative way of uh, uh, stating the intended state of the system. So so that's a huge win for them because instead of you know configuring and worrying about resources, now what they are effectively doing is telling Kubernetes what the intended state of the system should be, and and Kubernetes takes on the responsibility of bringing the system to that intended state. So, so that's a huge uh, benefit in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of how you work. So it standardizes all your configurations. Uh, you no longer have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, 
managing resources kubernetes does that for you automatically so so it's a huge win for developers and also if you look at it now we are moving from towards uh, like an infrastructure as code uh, um, you know practice of doing things so that itself gives a, a huge benefit to developers because now all your like api configurations are in like uh, are, are in are infrastructure as code basically so the, what that means is you get all the benefits of code for your api configurations which means revision management version management the ability to diff or collaborate uh, between developers so they get all these benefits and one of the other uh, most significant benefits is that you always have a, a, like a known state in the system so let's say you you do some change and and it breaks something right but in this mode of operations you always have a known guaranteed previous state of work so developers can very confidently revert back to that known state of uh, previous stability with this way of working so so that also gives them a lot of i guess like i guess a freedom of mind you know a, a lot less stress i guess um, when when working in this mode of operation so these are some of the benefits i see that you know developers can reap out of this okay so with that um you know Obviously, this is the the gateway specification, the key elements. How easy is it for? We mentioned earlier about sort of vendors, but uh, different vendors and what they can do to add on top. But um, obviously, with this core, how easy is it to extend this? Because all those good stuff you mentioned there about you know declarative uh, uh, declarative approach and um, known states that that's you know that's fantastic for being able to quickly recover and you know know what's uh, running your environment and stuff but obviously if you're adding additional bits and pieces to this from other vendors other capabilities uh do you still make it more complex or can you extend this um uh, approach uh to other capabilities as well yeah so so the whole purpose of so if you if you um, you know stepping back and looking at the gateway api specification at a higher level uh he, the, the purpose of this is to become a replace for the uh, ingress specification uh, or, or to be, make it better and and one reason for making it better is to make it more extensible so that's one main reason uh, this specification exists too so that you can make it better so f for example if you look at the ingress spec it's mainly designed for http kind of traffic but if you look at the gateway api spec you see different kinds for there's there's an HTTP route, there's a TCP route, there's a UDP route, likewise. So there's it's broken down, and, and then the the whole purpose of the spec, uh, one big purpose of the spec is, is to make it extensible like this to support different protocols, uh, you know, to uh, uh, come up with new features and so on. So the spec itself has a lot of flexibility, uh, but like I said. Uh, uh, the the there is a learning curve as well. So while the spec gives you flexibility, there there's still uh, some level of uh, learning curve you have to go through in order to uh, extend this. Uh, but but I guess you know as long as that is satisfied, you can get through those hurdles. It is extensible and there is community support. And in the beginning, as you asked, you know there still needs to be a you know lot of education, lot of evangelism around it, a, a lot more community. Uh, involvement than there is today uh, to make this all po possible. But in terms of extensibility, I guess, uh, uh, you know, extension is possible. Cool. Thanks. Now, you mentioned a lot through this in, in the paper about, you know, um, other um, specs and uh, configs around your uh, ingress controllers and within sort of a Kubernetes cloud native environment, you might have service meshes and is this you know throwing an api definition in there as well you know do they work together does it replace are there lots of overlaps now i'm no kubernetes expert and i get a little bit <laughs> confused as to you know where does that sit in that ecosystem because there's a lot of a lot of things you can push into that uh sort of config so does this make things easier or do you think things are still on the road of they're actually getting a little bit more complex before we can simplify it. 
uh yeah so so there there is uh, a confusion because uh, if you look at ingress uh, api gateways or if you look at uh, service meshes there is a qu quite an amount of overlapping functionality and and that is one reason why uh, this confusion exists uh, in the market because there is overlapping functionality uh, you know but in my head um, i've kind of come up with um, like an architecture or, or a model of how to think about these things uh, differently. So first of all, if you look at ingresses, the gateway API spec uh, and the service meshes, now they, see, they may seem like three things, but actually the, ing, uh, the, the gateway API spec is coming in as a replacement or as a better ingress, really. So, so if you think of it that way, there are only two things. There's the gateway API spec and then, okay, then there's a service mesh, right? So how do you, so that means there are API gateways and service meshes. Okay, now there is overlapping functionality in both of these two things as well. But uh, now the, the algorithm or kind of like thinking pattern in my head is, uh, so the, the purpose of an API gateway is to handle traffic coming in fr from north to the south, basically from outside to the inside and handling traffic between uh, business domains, perhaps. So basically, uh, external handling external APIs as well as internal APIs that cross business boundaries, right? So that means handling uh, authentication, like like you know external authentication, handling cross business domain authentication, and doing the same thing for rate limits and you know applying business policies and uh, getting business insights and you know things like that. Uh, the, the, the purpose of a service mesh is primarily to make, uh, uh, to, to improve the robustness and uh, core security of the system, right? So that means the primary purpose of a service mesh is to handle the inter-service communications, make them more robust, uh, you know, make them more secure at a, at a uh, core level not at the, you know, like the API authentication level, but more of a, like a mutual trust level and so on. Uh, the reason why I think like that is the whole need of this service mesh came in as we saw an explosion of services in the microservices uh, architecture paradigm, right? So uh, you, you are now talking to systems across the network, the, the calls are no longer within the same process and therefore there's a higher rate of failure uh, so the whole purpose of the service mesh is to, you know, reduce that failure rate and, and to make things uh, more robust. So, so that's how I, I tend to see these things, uh, two things now. So the API gateway as a piece of handling external and internal APIs across business boundaries and service mesh as a, as a solution to increase in the robustness and core level security of the system. Brilliant. That makes things a lot easier to, uh, to understand. Thanks. Um, just one thing that just occurred to me when you were saying there about the sort of like the explosion of of, of, of microservices, um, you know, we're obviously, you know, you're seeing a drive towards Kubernetes and um, uh, customers doing more sort of cloud native uh, style deployments. Um, are you seeing lots and lots? I know we talk about and we've talked about in, in various articles, things we've done in the past, you know, the the a, uh, explosion of APIs. But sort of within a business, are you seeing businesses handling more and more sort of APIs and more complex APIs? Is that something you're seeing personally? Yeah. So even amongst our, our own customers, this is something that, uh, you know, we are witnessing. Uh, so most people who started with a small number of APIs are, are seeing the benefit of, of having it. Uh, and, and there is an explosion of APIs uh, happening in the market as well. So, uh, so this helps in that uh, aspect as well because it helps uh, you, know, you to have things more, much more organized, much more you know, in a, like infrastructure as code manner. So everything is revision stored in a JIT repository. So it helps yeah. with managing all of that. And like I said, you need you actually need more tools like 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 a marketplace, a registry of APIs to discover. So uh, so the, it also goes along with the answer with one answer I gave previously, where you know gateway vendors can now actually focus on this set of problems as well instead of you know 
how do you deal with thousands of apis how do you organize them how do you get them discoverable uh, and you know providing the right level of analytics and all of that so uh, so 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 it benefits uh, in that aspect as well so yes there, there is an explosion of apis but we are also seeing tools and technologies coming out uh, to address those problems brilliant thank you very much that was really uh, re really uh, really interesting and uh, uh, great talking to you all right thank you for your